snowed out in January, uh, snowed out, right, snowed out, to delay this service and this message, how cool God is that uh, my child would be born on the Friday before this service, and wanting to talk about the Magi coming still, and birth and everything, it's just kind of cool seeing the coincidences, right? We're all on this journey. Each of you are journeyers in life. You're on some adventure right now. Maybe you're in between missions. Maybe you've begun a new one, or perhaps something has just finished. But in life, we are constantly journeying. In this journey of life, the number one thing that we all need, but we don't ever have enough of, is patience, right? In my experience of uh, Michaela becoming pregnant and then going through these last nine months, it's been this transformative journey to prepare me to enter into the stage of fatherhood. But you can all relate in your own regard with being prepared for a journey and then that experience starting. When the three magi came to visit Jesus, think about where they were in life doing their own thing, doing their king stuff, coming from the east. And because of their faith and their belief in the message that they had heard, they dropped everything, gathered together supplies, and went on this journey to find this newborn king to come. Now, they didn't fully understand what they were looking for, so obviously they go to the king in town, King Herod. By the way, just some fun fact history. King Herod was a governor appointed by the Roman Empire to oversee the land and the area. He was very much a political appointee, and so obviously very clingy to his power. So when news comes to his doorstep that the people who he is in charge of as a result of the emperor's decree, to find out that there's a new king in town, he too became very scared. But these wise men didn't know this, and so thinking they're talking, you know, hermano to hermano, they follow the instructions, and oh yeah, we'll go back and we'll tell them what's going on. So they go to Mary and Joseph. Then we pause, because all the while the Magi are making their way, Mary and Joseph are on this journey as well, following the star, looking to pause. They don't know when the baby's going to be born. So they go off and they find an inn and they get turned away and they land themselves in a stable. A barn, if you will. Just think about the horse stables that are just down Guinea Road, right? There. That's, that's where Mary gave birth. But much worse. There were no epidurals. And she gives birth in that stable. It's in a manger which is just a feeding trough, and they lay the newborn baby, the new king of the Jews, our Lord and Savior, born in the most humble setting. And this young couple finishes one leg of their journey, and they wait. They don't know what's going to come next. In your life and your experience, you hit these benchmarks, right? You accomplish one thing, okay, we got this over. But how much foresight do we have in life, truly? We go back to the COVID pandemic that happened just two years ago. Think about where you were January 2020. And then what happened in March to where we are now. This journey of life that has these twists and turns. Perhaps you have found yourself in a stable, completely unstable waiting and hoping for God to come through. And we, in this passage, we all know that Mary and Joseph and Jesus are going to be just fine. 
But they didn't know that, right? Yeah. And all the while, the Magi are making their way. The first big lesson of the Magi is that I believe truly that there is a blessing on its way to you. If you find yourself in a stable, waiting for the next part of your leg of the journey to begin, do not be afraid, for God is with you and will provide for you. It happens countless times and times again. Every time the people of the Lord are on a journey, God provides to them when they need it and exactly what they need. Go back to the Exodus, when all the Jews left Egypt and they're wandering through the wilderness. And God provides them, when they're finally at that place of starvation, manna from heaven, cornflakes, and they live and survive off of it. The manna from heaven is there for you as well. That blessing, but you have to go out and gather it. So we come back, and they're in the stable now, and they're making their way back to Bethlehem. And this is when the Magi meet up with them. Where is it? When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid it homage. I think that's actually a kind of funny thing. Think about you're just like hanging out in a house, and then like someone knocks on the door, and you have like three kings, and they're like, there he is. And they come on down and just kneel, and they start worshiping your baby. What would you do in that situation, right? Gosh, talk about just a crazy like Tuesday. You know, what's for dinner tonight? And then the Magi just show up, overwhelmed with joy. And they offer them these gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Connect back with Mary and Joseph now. Suddenly your life is interrupted. You've got this newborn that you're just trying to take care of. You're in sort of a foreign land trying to figure out what's next. Believing in voices and angels, suddenly kings arrive and give you gifts. Now what? The second message of this story of journey, the first one being there's a blessing out there waiting for you. The second one is when that blessing comes, be a good steward of your blessings. When Mary and Joseph received gold, frankincense, and myrrh, I don't think they knew what to do with it, right? It doesn't say in the passage that when they received it, they suddenly had an awareness that it's not included in the text, they just got the gifts. Imagine waking up one morning and someone deposits a check for a million dollars into your checking account. What do you do with that money? But here's the thing, there's a purpose for all blessings. There's a purpose for the blessings that God gives us on our journey. And if we're good stewards of those blessings, they will be the way that they provide for us to get to the next place. Because here is where and why that blessing came. Now, after the Magi had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. I didn't read verses 16 through 18 because it's a tough one. But it's the passage about the massacre of the infants, when Herod orders for infanticide. Infanticide. Finally, when Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph again and said, Get up, take your child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who you are seeking in the child's life are dead. Joseph receives the dream, go to Egypt and wait there. And then finally, he gets the dream and they go back to Israel. Tell me, friends. How does a young couple, unemployed, in a foreign land, pay for a trip to Egypt, stay there, and then pay for the trip back? How can you afford that sort of a trip? If only we had a large sum of money and valuable goods available to us to pay for that trip. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When they received the gifts, they had no idea what was going to come. And then they received the message, you need to get out of town or you're going to die. And they leave. And God provided them that blessing to pay for their journey, to remain there, 
and to be able to come back. This is one interpretation, but it makes the most sense. The third point of the message is that the blessings that you receive are there to provide for you to get to the next stage. This is to fill up that gas tank. And the beauty of worship and church is that this can be a blessing to all of you. Your experiences in life can be a blessing to each other. And remember, you never know the full story of what's going on. When you bless someone else, that could be the gold, frankincense, and myrrh that gets that person to Egypt. And when you receive a blessing that comes out of nowhere, it could very well be that you're about to be sent to Egypt. And that is going to be what provides for you. Can you think back in your life with your hindsight in a time in which you received an incredible blessing and then how that blessing turned out to provide for you for the journey to come? When I was working at the hospital at Yale New Haven, um, I had the opportunity to finish my job and become a part-time chaplain while also doing this and while also being a full-time chaplain at the VA, in addition to also my Air Force stuff. I don't do enough. Um, but you know what? I stayed with it. Continuing the job, working one weekend a month, making some extra hours, but staying on the payroll, we looked into receiving benefits for my time off. Well, here's the thing, because I work for the VA as a fellow, not a full-time employee, I don't actually receive any state benefits for paternity leave. And because I'm a new employee, I don't receive any of the federal benefits being provided as well. And because I'm a new employee, I've only accrued so much PTO to use for my time off. But I continued to work that job at Yale New Haven Hospital and when I looked into Connecticut paid leave, I find out that my full-time hours and my continued employment at Yale New Haven Hospital qualifies me for the 12 weeks of Connecticut paid leave. Had I quit that job in June, I would not be here to say that I have access to that benefit, that blessing. And because I've worked over the last 12 weeks, the hours that I've had go towards that benefit. Yeah. I get to be with my child because I have received gold, frankincense, and myrrh in the form of this incredible benefit that had I not, but I didn't know that in June. When Mary and Joseph received the gifts, they didn't know what they were about to go into. When I decided to stay with the job, I didn't know what I was going to get into. When you received that big blessing in your life, and then the next storm came, you can look back now and we can glorify God. So we're all on this journey in different parts of it. I believe in my heart, and I can stay and testify, that there is a blessing out there waiting for you. It's on its way. Or maybe you've already just received it. But that journey of the Magi, the journey of the blessing that's coming to you, remember that when you receive it, be a good steward of it. Don't spend it all at once. Because it's going to provide for you for the, for the upcoming leg of the journey. And then when you get through that moment and you get back to that safety, to that place, to the end of the adventure, we can gather together and testify and glorify to God. Hear the good news. I was blessed incredibly, and I was able to get through this difficult time, and that has increased my faith in God's love. Let's all turn to the Lord in prayer. God, we are waiting patiently for you. We're patiently waiting for your blessing, patiently waiting for guidance, for hope, for answers, maybe just to get through the day. We're waiting for healing, not only of the body, but of the mind and of the spirit, of relationships. We're waiting for answers, what to do next, 
In all these things, God, we turn our hope to you. And Lord, I ask that you bless these people in their patience and waiting and on their journeys. Bless them abundantly. Give them wisdom to be good stewards of their blessings. And give them the opportunity to bless others as you have blessed them. We ask this all in your Son's name we pray. Amen.